primary hyperparathyroidism, which is what we'll talk about today, is a condition where one or more of your parathyroid glands that sit in the neck over here uh, go rogue, as I like to say. So meaning normally the parathyroid glands help regulate the level of calcium in your body by producing a hormone called PTH. Sometimes when one of the, or more of them get diseased, they produce too much PTH in the body and don't listen to signals from the body that say, stop, we're good, we have enough. And so it just keeps going almost like the Energizer Bunny and with higher PTH levels. Those high PTH levels affect your body by either taking calcium from your bones, putting calcium in excess into your urine, taking excess calcium from what you eat during the day, and creating the levels of circulating calcium most of the time to be at much higher levels than normal for the body. That in turn can also affect how your heart and cardiovascular system work. There are also complications or side effects that have to do with neuro and co cognition. So there can be a wide range of effects for having the disease. Some patients have no side effects or consequences yet, and others may have many symptoms or side effects. We talk about that about 2% of middle age or older females and 1% of middle age or older males have this, but it can happen at any age. And even though that percentage might sound small, when you think about how many millions of people in the US there are, and 2% or 1% of those, that's actually a very high number. So the disease is very underdiagnosed, underrecognized, and undertreated in our population. This is a disease that we call a surgical disease, meaning the only way to treat it is with surgery. Medication can artificially bring the numbers down, but it has no impact on decreasing the end complications of this. So it's one of those things that severity is a strange word. It may be looked at as who has really bad osteoporosis or bone disease, or who has really bad kidney stones that they've had multiple kidney stone surgeries for, but people also that have long-standing and untreated disease can have long-term consequences to their heart or other parts of their body down the road that we just don't completely understand yet. So I think severity is a challenging word. So who do we screen for primary hyperparathyroidism? Pretty much anybody that has a high calcium level on your routine blood work that your doctor does, anybody that's had a kidney stone, and anybody with osteoporosis or osteopenia should get a parathyroid level drawn to go along with their calcium level. That's how we screen. Labs are calcium, PTH, vitamin D, creatinine, and these days we're looking more closely at your phosphorus level also to screen for the disease. The disease can take many forms in terms of your labs. So classically, you had to have high calcium and high PTH to be told you had the disease. We now know that you can have a normal calcium level and or even a normal PTH level, but still have the disease. So it's really having an expert put all these lab values to, together, along with any symptoms or secondary effects to decide if you have primary hyperparathyroidism. Once the diagnosis of primary hyperparathyroidism is made, you should really be referred to a surgeon specialist and or endocrinologist to discuss treating the disease. And most of us feel that anybody with the diagnosis should be treated, which means an outpatient surgery in most centers. If you are successfully treated, sometimes all we see is a resolution of your labs, that they look normal. So some patients feel no different after surgery, and many of those are because they had no symptoms. I've had other patients that have come in thinking they felt fine, and then they come back to see me two or three weeks later and they say they feel like a new person because they had some cognition, fatigue, which are two very common things that weren't quite right, but they just didn't realize it. So some people feel very different and some people 
feel the same. Moreover, um, patients who the indication is because they have osteoporosis, it takes time for your bones to start improving or to stop getting worse, so we can't check that for about a year and a half. And same thing with the kidney stones. We can't make them go away, but we can greatly decrease the incidence of new ones from happening. So some people they have immediate effects, some people don't feel any, but there are, and other people it takes time to really see the improvement. Primary hyperparathyroidism is for all intents and purposes a benign disease. There are rare instances of a cancer, but in general, it is extremely rare. Any surgeon even that is an expert and does a lot of these maybe sees one or two in their career. And people that do have cancer are gonna present with very high calciums, generally over 15, which you don't see uh, in regular day-to-day -day practice. For patients that are diagnosed by either their primary care physician or endocrinologist or nephrologist or other doctor with primary hyperparathyroidism, when they get sent to me, uh, we, do, we finish the workup. So if they need more labs, we do that. I do an ultrasound in the clinic to see if I can visualize and see where this bad gland is. About 30 to 40% of patients, I can see it on my own ultrasound. The patients that I don't see it on, we have a specialized 3D CAT scan that we have patients undergo to better help find the abnormal glands. It's not perfect, we haven't figured out perfect yet, but it'll find something in about 80% of patients. That helps me plan my surgery. When we do surgery, it is outpatient, you go to sleep, and surgery can take anywhere from 15 minutes, if it's super quick and I know exactly where it is, to two hours. More of the specifics I will describe to you in our visit, um, but we also here at St. John's check your parathyroid levels while you're asleep in the operating room to know that we have cured you. And that's called intraoperative PTH testing, which is really the gold standard for doing this operation.